Okay, thank you very much. So it's time now. Uh, welcome to join uh, the first uh, Asian symposium on uh, entomophagy. Uh, entomophagy is is not so uh, maybe familiar word. It uh, it means uh, insect food, may means eating in, in insect or edible insect, uh, but totally it means to to bite to eat some insect. And uh, here is uh, uh, the first time uh, for this uh, event, and uh, uh, I'm very happy to uh, invite uh five uh professional uh researchers on this uh, of this field uh later i will give a brief introduction and uh, today we will uh have this meeting uh, uh following this agenda uh first i will take maybe five minutes to have a, a very simple opening after that uh, we will have the first first talk uh which will give by uh, dr wasapon champut from kasesat university of thailand and uh, the talk two were from uh, Kyush University, uh, my colleague, uh, Dr. Hiromitsu Araki. And the third talk, talk will be given by uh, uh, Dr. Zurada Nasutian from IPB University of Indonesia. And after that, uh, we will have a five minutes break. Actually, um, we will have only two hours. So it, we, we put a lot in these two hours. So uh, every talk only maybe just take 15 minutes. And after the break, uh, we will have the fourth talk, uh, which will be given by uh, Dr. Satoshi Kamitani of Kyushu, uh, from Kyushu University. And uh, the fifth talk will be given by uh, Dr. Sarosh uh, Kamani from uh, Kasasati University of Thailand. And uh, if, if the time is okay, I will give the second talk, uh, the last talk. And after the six talks, we have maybe 15 or 20 minutes for uh, general Q&A for free dis discussion, and most important for networking, uh, because uh, today more than 70 people uh, have registered this uh, event. And uh, I say there is a lot of, uh, the background is very uh, diverse uh, from universities, uh, from researching uh, academics, from companies, from ventures. So uh, I hope uh, last week I used this 15 minutes to have a very active uh, networking. So um, now I will uh, briefly introduce uh, Kyushu University. Uh, Kyushu University is one uh, representative university in Japan. Uh, and uh, you can see from maybe this, this part, there's map here. Um, it's in the Kyushu island of uh, uh, Japan. There are four main islands in Japan and Kyushu islands is to the uh, southwest uh, of Japan. And the biggest city in this island is Fukuoka. So uh, Kyushu University is based uh, at Fukuoka. And uh, Kyushu University is one of the seven former uh, emperor universities in Japan. And this is about history. And now uh, he's, uh, it is one of the 10 uh, designated national universities in Japan. And um, from the QS ranking is uh, the seventh uh, I'll say best maybe university in Japan. And uh, you can see if, if you see the Kyushu University uh, homepage, you can find uh, there are a lot of schools and centers here. And one center is this Kyushu University Institute from Asian and Oceania Studies. And this is uh, where I uh, am now. Uh, so next I will uh, have brief introduction of this, this institute. Actually, it's a, it's a very new institute is established in uh, 2019, just three years ago. And uh, the mission of this uh, institute is to create a new academic field at the highest level and bring about innovation of Asia, Oceania, and the, uh, and the world. And uh, you can see here, actually, it's, it's very, how to say, SDGs focused. And uh, when uh, we talk about this SDGs, uh, we concentrated our uh, issues into this Asia and Oceania uh, regions. So uh, actually every year we have this uh, big uh, like festival in our uh, university. It will um, take maybe more than one week. And now uh, we are on maybe the how say it, fifth days of, of this uh, uh, Asia week. And uh, in this Asia week, we have a lot of plans like this uh, kind of symposiums and seminars. Uh, in, in this uh, period. And uh, 
now it's tense and actually uh, we have only two or three days uh, and you can see uh, our symposium is here and you can see our symposium is actually uh, the QAOS SDG special seminar and uh, there's a lot of uh, this kind of how to say, seminars about SDGs so when we talk about SDGs uh, what I should plan when I consider about this I uh, the idea is insect food and you know uh, this is a homepage of F FAO. Uh, insect food is is very I'll say uh, hot topic now in in the world. And uh, like this, uh, this is a report uh, released from F FAO. And the how to say combine this insect food and Asian. So <laughs> I had this idea of this uh, Asian symposiums on entomophagy. So uh, that is why uh, this how to say symposiums uh, was was uh, planned. Okay, uh, let's start. Uh, it's just maybe five minutes. I want to start the first talk, but before that, there is a very important thing that is the announcement. Uh, I don't want to uh, this symposium just be one time. Uh, so maybe next year, uh, if Corona gets okay, uh, uh, we want to uh, plan a new uh, on-site event. Uh, the second symposium. So uh, call for talks from this one uh, from today. Uh, we will use one year to uh, plan this uh, event. So if you have any uh, interest, please uh, please contact me. Okay. So uh, time is limited. So uh, let's start the first talk. Uh, Doctor uh, Wasapon Champut, book. Uh, are you ready? Okay. I will stop my yes. Okay. Can I yeah. start now? Please. Okay. So you see the full slide? Full screen. Okay. Well, good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Wasapan Priti Sejan Put from the Department of Food Science and Technology, KSSA University in Thailand. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank you, Kyushu University, for organizing this, and um, especially Dr. Kuhn for inviting me to give a talk about insects benefits and food applications. Um, I have 10 minutes, so I'm going to be um, quite brief, um, but I hope we can discuss more later on because there's so many things that we can talk about this topic. All right, so um, if you have come to Thailand, I'm sure you have seen this kind of insects uh, selling like, like um, very easy to find. And um, like this is the thing one pupae, um, crickets, grasshopper, and this picture of many kinds of insects. I've seen this since I was young, so back a long time ago. Um, so it's nothing, new for us to have to just eat like this but there are many many Thai people do not like this kind of way of eating insects because they see it, them like real animals they still feel disgust some of uh, Thai people even we have been cons consuming um over 30 40 years I believe so here we come with the I would call it the the next era of the insects as food um, there are many kinds of products that has insects, edible insects, in being part of the the ingredients. Um, yeah, as you as you can see from the from the slides, yeah, this you can see big breakfast cereals with insects, um, burgers, um, granola, uh, energy bar, and many many more. So companies um, pay so much attention into. Uh, finding a new source of food, a new source of protein, and make it um, likable for consumers. Um, the reason that people don't like uh, to to consume insects, not okay, apart from um, they feel disgust, but another big reason is that they see it, they don't want to see it real like this. Like in Thai, in in Kassasan University, back a few years ago, we have. Um, we have organized um, uh, a short course on edible insects, I think that five days in a row. Um, half of uh, the participants do not want to eat insects because they don't want to see them like this. 
But when we transform into these kind of products, um, we ask them to try, they dare to try. And they, they, they like it actually. So this is also a way to, um, yeah, to hide the, the look of insects and also to give uh, more choices uh, for consumers. Uh, the Asian insects as food and feed insect, uh, as, sorry, uh, Asian food and feed insect association or in short FIA is the association that gathers um, both industry and academia uh, together. Uh, more than 50 members uh, we have this year. This event was organized yeah, like seven years ago with a cooking school, Le Canon Bleu, originated from France. And they use, they show how to use, how to incorporate insects into, um, into the Thai, not Thai food, but into food and make it very fancy. So I show you some pictures. This is just a few of the, the yeah, just the, the food that they show it um, at that in the event. Uh, this is a kind of Thai food, okay, like a um, appetizer. Inside, actually, they use pork, normal recipe, but they they replace it with crickets. Okay, at this one, this crispy um, appetizer, they sprinkle with crickets and some herbs. This is dessert. Inside here is white chocolate. This like creamy white chocolate. Can you guess where can you find insects in this um, yummy uh, dessert? Since we don't have much time, I, I tell you, it's in here, crust here, like cookie type. It was so good. It, was it tastes really good. Okay, so this is kind of the, the fashion. The, um, the sophisticated cuisine that we can co uh, incorporate insects into the into the yeah the, the dishes. Okay, um, this publication I would like to show you is was published in two thousand so this year was um, conducted in Brazil. Um, they collected um, responses more than uh, about seven hundred eighty um, participants, and they asked. What if they like insect or not, and why they like edible insects? So, top five because it high is it contains high protein, is nutritious, and is yeah it's good for health. So see, consumers they know they 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 really know about edible insects how good they are. However. The negative sides, the, the negative aspects about about um, consumption of edible insects because they they um, not familiar. They look they feel it's weird. They um, looks yeah look disgusting. So, but when you look when we look at the the, the two uh, sides of attributes, there's more positive um, responses from uh, consumer seven hundred eighty people. Okay, What's, what is surprising me is that sustainability is number seven, not on the top five. Yeah, because I, I don't know why, but actually when we look about, when we look at presentations and, and or uh, literatures about edible insects, it has, they have to talk about sustainability, but somehow it's ranked number seven, okay, among for, for consumers. I think Dr. Kuhn has shown this, um, yeah, the, um, this picture before edible insects, a solution for food and feed security is, is, a, is a news, it's a publication from, F, uh, from the FAO. If I may summarize, uh, they talk about alternative solutions for food securities, for climate changes, as future food, no hormone, uh, no growth hormone used uh, to kill virus, uh, no antibiotics used, and it's a big demand for markets. Use localized ingredients, and, and yeah, it can reach to global market. Carbon footprint is very low for um, for in, for ed to rear edible insects. So for FAO, sustainability sustainability is one of the key things to drive this sector. When you search more, you will see a lot of pictures talking about comparison um, of amount of feed they use, um, the 
this is the, the, the amount of feed they use. The water they uh, we use, not they, okay, they we use um, to have one kilogram of protein, the land we use. So and you see that for edible insects, it's, it's very little compared to other protein sources. You, you, you can look more about, um, can search more in Google, so it's quite easy to find. But what I, I really like is this picture. I think it's de it depicts very, um, very clear about edible insects. Like if we start with two grasshoppers in 22 weeks, we will end up with enormous number of grasshoppers. And that's can, can be calculated about eight hundred, about nine hundred um, million kilograms of meat that can feed the whole Belgium country. While if we uh, look at the uh, the way we grow um, cows, cattle, uh, so we we start with male and female, so two cows. In twenty two weeks, we have an, a baby cow plus two cows from the beginning. And that's just enough for um, yeah, one thousand about one thousand kilograms of meat, which can feed about fifteen people for one year. Well, if edible insects can feed um, over one um, yeah the whole Belgium for one year. So I'm not saying that we should everyone should eat insects. We should not eat um, cows, um, beef, but it just just to give you the fact that. Yeah, sustainability is one of the key things um, of when we talk about edible insects. Um, this publication has been cited like many, um, really, really many times. They try to couple um, insects in many, in three perspectives uh, versus the 17 uh, SDG um, sustainable development goals. But when, when we look at here, red, we can see insects as um, they're not so friendly because it's, it's like a pest, destroy our crops, increase poverty, uh, hunger, and not so good. Yeah, it can cause diseases because some of them can be also vectors for diseases. That, that's true, that's true. And we look from another side, insects as friends, we have we, they they are pollinators. They make food. They make fruits for us. They make um, they they make like yeah fruits and also food for us. They are also predators and vectors and uh, sorry predators and the uh, to to kill the vectors inside the yeah inside inside the insects. And the last one is that they can. They have. Uh, they can. They are. They can recycle organic matters on land and and below water. So that's that's another aspect. But when we look at edible insects, this publication clearly says that it gives um, positive effects to many dimensions of edible in, of, of uh, SDGs because we can eat them, so no poverty, less zero hunger, and so on. So I'm not gonna go into details, but you can um, look at this publication um, and find more information. Products that we are, that are available, let's see what they claim. So they have, they claim that if you eat this, this is a product in Thailand, to save the earth one bite at a time with uh, four grams of protein per consumption. Dr. Kun, sorry, how many minutes I have left? Um, I think you can use your uh, time, maybe more four minutes, I think. Okay, I try to keep it short okay. now. Okay. Okay, um, so you can see that they claim about sustainability and protein source. This one as well, these are, um, I searched in the, um, on the website, they talk about protein content. Again, protein content. And this one is says like um, sustainability source of protein fiber. So you see protein and sustainability are the main key things that, that they talk about. Check, they look yummy actually. For me, it looks very yummy. All of them contain insects, really, insect powder. 
right? Uh, we have also quick, uh, cricket oil available for salad dressing, for frying, for stir fry. Okay, this is new. This is something new. Let's see if people like it or not. This is something, uh, a new kind of product. Another one that I would like to do to, to talk um, about is the hydrolysate, protein hydrolysate. So we have crickets can eat like this, fry and eat like this. Cricket powder, like flour type. So you can add into um, solid food products, bread, cookies, um, drinks as well. Um, but the problem is it has about 30% of solubility. And some, if you don't really fry them, um, um, like really fine, it can stick into your throat. So you have the sandy um, feeling of um, in your throat. So here we come with the protein hydrolysate era that can solve um, the problem of, of solubility. Plus, plus that hydrolysate has other um, actions as well, like it can increase the absorption, uh, creates bioactive peptides, uh, prevent allergic reactions. This is more, more or less depends on how we hydrolyze it, um, create taste and flavor and increase solubility. And there are many ways to hydrolyze enzymes, acid or alkali. In my lab, we have been um, working on it uh, for a couple of years already. Um, quite positive, I would say that um, what we have achieved so far. Um, bioactivities of bioactive peptides that I was mentioned here, we have bioactive peptides. Yes, so uh, in, in my lab, we check antioxidants, very good. Um, antioxidant properties, anti-inflammation and anti pregnancy it was, it's positive. Yeah, it's really positive. Uh, so these kind of activities, you, you can find a lot in, in a lot of research in milk, in eggs, in soy, protein. So um, it's, it's like a newbie. So they are entering, they are entering, uh, following the, the, yeah, the order, over their uh, protein sources. And there are many publications, and now there are a lot more. They talk about insect peptides, hydrolysate in health, for health aspects. Okay, but what can go wrong if we, um, if we eat insects? So we have, you know, at the farm in Thailand, we have GAP, good agricultural practice. So that when we have insect, they are fine, but the mishandling process after harvesting, so post, post harvest. That's, that's the key of histamine, um, not contamination, but histamine um, presence in the insects because of uh, face and thaw, uh, many cycles, and also they don't keep it like in the freezer. If they just keep the insects at four degrees, we have a problem already of histamine, high histamine because of the enzyme that can convert histidine to histamine. So that's a problem that we have so far and not we have so far, but I mean, around, around the world. And Bacillus cereus, which is spore forming bacteria in the gut of insects. This is also quite a trouble um, yeah, around the world. So we have to be also careful with that. I would like to link the, I, would like, I don't want you to see it food and feed as two, diff, so two separate sectors. They are, we have a big link between food sector and feed sector. Uh, this is um, a picture uh, from, the, from the US. They called it One Health, that the feed actually also has an effect on human health and environment has an effect on, yeah, it's, they're all linked in three aspects. So what I would like to talk a little bit more is about um, insects as feed, BSF. This is a, a main player at the moment. Many, many companies uh, pay so much attention into BSF and they're willing to invest um, into this sector. Uh, so black soldier fly, that's the full name. So in total, we start from um, eggs into lava, lava that we can use. It's less than two months. And it contains oil, um, and high protein content. So this is how, how they look cute. In France, you can find um, in supermarket easily, fish fed with BSF, chicken fed with, with BSF. It's already available in the market. Okay. And when we link BSF uh, with SDGs, yeah, they close the loop, let's say like zero, zero waste, like circular economy. Insects eat organic waste, and then you can use for animal feed in aquaculture, in, in um, livestock. 
and for the um, yeah the how to say that the poopy of the of the lava and the, the chitin that that they 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 mold it they they change their their form can be used as fertilizer and if you fit them all sixteen SDGs are in here. Uh, last slide before I end my presentation. This is the uh, pilot scale uh, BSF farm in, in Bangkok in my university. So we work with uh, companies and, and um, granting agency of the government. Uh, so we can test different kinds of BSF feeds, look at how they behave, if they grow well, and, and, and so on and so on. So they so yeah, there's some research, the research going on, and this they separate into different products, like just just a dry BSF and yeah, many kinds, and they we can use them all back into agriculture. Yes. So thank you for um, for your attention and opportunity. Uh, thank you, Kyushu University, for giving me the opportunity. Thank you very much. Uh... Sorry for the very pushing time. <laughs> and I really want to hear more about this. Uh, and uh, actually, there are maybe two or three uh, questions here. And uh, uh, now maybe the next, uh, how see, Dr. Alaki Sensei, you can uh, start to uh, pre -pre prepare your uh, presentation. And uh, Dr. Champut, thank you very much for your presentation. Uh, if thank you have you. time, please answer the questions in the chat. Okay. 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 All right. So maybe you can stop your uh, slide sharing and uh, Dr. Araki Sensei. Uh, yeah. Yeah. If you have a more uh, question about uh, Dr. Champu's presentation, uh, we can uh, discuss in the general uh, QA session later. And of course, you can uh, uh, put your questions into the chat. Okay, uh, okay, next, uh, let me uh, introduce Dr. Uh, Alaki. Uh, are you ready, Alaki Sensei? Maybe you can turn on your uh, microphone. Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, no problem. Okay, thank you for Dr. Uh, Sam. So in my presentation, uh, I will be talking about its fruits and feeds uh, through the viewpoint industrialization and commercialization. So today, uh, there is no doubt uh, edible insects are attractive uh, food resource for our life. So I guess one of the reasons creating this situation is based on this report uh, from FAO, uh, Food and Agriculture Organization of the United States in 2013. So this report uh, described that insects are very uh, environmentally friendly. Yeah than existing livestock uh, production system. So in addition, so uh, they are not only a uh, high protein content, but also uh, rich as a nutri nutrient like vitamin and minerals. So therefore, uh, insects are very uh, useful, uh, not only for global uh, climate, but also our and animal food life. So, however, so in terms of industrialization, so we will think on it once again. So can we have business success in this field? So I believe uh, the answer is yes. <laughs> okay. So this number is the amount of uh, fundraised of one of the leading startup company of uh, insect food and fees. This company name is uh, Insect, Why Insect Insect. So which has been established in 2011 in France. 
a huge fundraise. So this company produced a uh, yellow mirua for human and uh, animal, including fish and the plants. So insect has great production system uh, like this one. Uh, yellow one, uh, it will produce more than several hundred thousand tons uh, of insect product annually. So most production systems are automatic, uh, like here, uh, and uh, closed. So insect has several plants in the world. So including uh, insects, a lot of uh, startup companies uh, have launched it uh, in the world uh, before and after uh, uh, releasing report from uh, uh, FAO in 2013. So these are uh, selected ones, uh, but so in fact, uh, there are a lot of startup companies uh, other than them. So in addition, our major corporation also entries to this market. Uh, for example, uh, Nestle, uh, which is a leading company of uh, food and of beverage, uh, launches uh, pet food uh, with insect proteins. So including uh, insect, uh, there are uh, startups company uh, which got successful for fundraising. So uh, there is a, some example uh, here in this right. So and uh, it's, it is surprised that the total amount of fundraised are more than several tens million US dollars. Uh, I think it seems to be a overheated, but the market of insect food and feed is rapidly growing. So however, uh, in fact, uh, what is an important factor to keep uh, this boom or this situation? Especially, uh, we have uh, uh, two uh, major competitors. Uh, so uh, these two competitors are uh, plant-based uh, and culture meat uh, as uh, alternative proteins. So, and uh, again, what is the important factor to industrialize insects and food and feed uh, in the future to make a difference against these two uh, alternative proteins? Here are I would like to suggest four points regarding industrialization of insect food and feed. So first uh, is a, a stable su supply system and production cost. So one of the advantage uh, of insects is that they play a role as the composer of food and organic waste. So. It is very useful uh, in terms of resource recycling, that is, uh, ecosystem uh, described also Dr. Champert. <laughs> so uh, we can get them with very low cost. However, uh, it is important that we need to prepare stable uh, their feed, not only amount, but also content to keep stable production. So, so in addition, uh, it is possible that food and organic waste include agricultural chemicals and pesticides. It is very dangerous for uh, us and uh, animals uh, because it might be a concentrated in the body of insects. We know uh, insects are uh, food and feed are uh, environmentally uh, friendly, but it is still are more expensive, uh, for example, plant-based uh, proteins. So reducing production costs uh, must be necessary to expand the market. And second, this is the most important but uh, difficult point, especially image. So other factors are still difficult, but I think they might be achieved by the cooperation effort 
However, it is very difficult for insects to be uh, widely recognized and accepted as food resource by people. So the real insect materials are still uh, acceptable. So the current best solution is convert uh, insect material to powder. Uh, but I think we have to develop other solutions in the future. So also we need to uh, consider uh, food and feed separately on the market uh, because uh, yeah, still people uh, uh, don't uh, like to eat uh, uh, insect, but so sometimes animal uh, the tasty good, so animal uh, likes to eat uh, insect. So okay. The third one, uh, so as you can see, uh, there are startup. Uh, there are many startup companies. So it is very important to differentiate uh, from other companies. So for example, a uh, specific strain such as rich nutrient is one of the competitive advantage. So, and uh, this is list uh, of some uh, startup companies. So as you can see, uh, um, there are kind of few uh, insects uh, they used. So, and uh, I mean, so uh, it said uh, there are more one million uh, insects in the world. So I think there might be more appropriate insects. Uh, as food and feed resources we haven't discovered yet. So, and also uh, com uh, the important competitive advantage is a uh, production system. So uh, again, this slide, uh, most company uh, target insects are black solid dryer. So, if a uh, company make a difference against other companies, uh, the production system is a uh, very competitive advantage point. Okay, finally, oops. Finally, uh, regulation is also important, but it depends on the uh, country or regions. So companies should say, pay attention in their uh, country's regulations. Okay, so uh, this is a, a summary uh, for my presentation, but uh, I will skip it, but and uh, this is the final presentation. So actually, uh, uh, the Kyushu University has just uh, launched it to sell silicone cookie this month. So Kyushu University has a history that we have breed and uh, uh, maintained uh, silicone for 100, more than 100 years. So in collaboration with the School of Design, so these cookies are developed. Uh, please uh, try it uh, when you visit Kyushu University. So, thanks. Um, uh, my presentation is that. OK. <clears throat> thank you, Dr. Araki. And uh, thank you very much for this announcement. <laughs> <laughs> I want to uh, announce this uh, <clears throat> too because I <clears throat> I know this uh, this product was released uh, maybe this month uh, because we have a Kyushu University Festival in this month month Gakuen Sai Kyu Dai Sai and uh, just in in this timing uh, the students I think this this project was uh, products was was pr uh, produced by students right Yeah, uh, student. Uh... Uh, school of design yeah 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 so if, if you can come to Kish university uh please try i want to yeah. try it yeah. <laughs> thank you very much dr araki uh thank you yeah maybe uh we have uh some uh there is one question here and uh if you have time please answer the question in chat okay so okay. uh 
And next, uh, Dr. Uh, Zurada Nastion, can you uh, start your slide sharing? All right, thank you, Dr. Chian. Okay. Um, so I will start the shares to share the screen. Okay, I hope um, everyone can see this clearly. Yes, and you can start. Okay. All right, okay, no thank, problem. You. thank you. All right, thank you. Um, good morning, everyone. Um, thank you to Dr. Chian and also Kyushu, Kyushu University Institute for Asian and Oceanian Studies for inviting me for this uh, symposium. Uh, my name is Zuraida Nasution. I'm from the Department of Community Nutrition, Faculty of Human Ecology, IPB University, Indonesia. So if there are any of you who have never been to Indonesia, uh, when you have the chance, please uh, do drop an email and let's see if we can uh, meet up because uh, um, our place is not that far from Jakarta. Um, so I will um, uh, bring a, a topic on edible insects and their nutritional potentials. Some of the, some of uh, the topics, some of the details that um, I have in my slides, uh, actually have been beautifully uh, delivered by Dr. Wasapon previously. So I will not go into details for some uh, slides. Um, so first, uh, let's see how the insect eating habits in Indonesia. Um, it is uh, insect eating habits in Indonesia is not as um, advanced, I think, uh, the term uh, as in Thailand. Um, we have it very locally in some places and traditionally, meaning that um, it is not touched by the industry yet. So it's in, in, in local and traditional way of consuming it. Um, so, for example, we have uh, some places in central Java and East Java. Um, where some people uh, consume the uh, caterpillar pupa of thick trees, um, the, the larva of wasp, and then moth uh, made into crackers. And then we have, uh, this is the quite um, spread one, the larva of uh, sago beetle or palm weevil consumed in uh, Southeast Sulawesi, in Maluku Island, and in Papua. And we have some uh, uh, communities uh, eating crickets and uh, grasshoppers uh, in Yogyakarta and also in uh, West Java. But again, even if you come to these provinces uh, like Yogyakarta, West Java, and others, you don't necessarily see them sold um, everywhere. So even in those places, they are uh, even more localized and mostly are in the um, less urbanized uh, places. So it's it's local and it's traditional um, uh, uh, in terms of the habits. So I'll just uh, this is only to show you. Uh, this is one of the uh, most eaten, uh, other than uh, grasshoppers and crickets, uh, uh, larva of sago uh, beetles. So you can see in some areas. So basically, they uh, chop down, they cut down the uh, old sago trees that has been rotten in the middle of the uh, trunk. Then they will find like large fat uh, larva that, that can be consumed. So the, the, the problems uh, why it is not uh, spread wide yet is mostly because of the negative attitude towards the consumption of insects, uh, because of the feeling of disgust mostly. Uh, like if you mention to someone um, you have pet, burger patty coming from insects, they would they might quickly think of worms or perhaps think of this larva and of, it will immediately stop their interest in consuming it. So some, um, uh, some uh, scientists or let's say people who champion for, for insects as food uh, suggest that it should be coming from the type of insects that are locally available. So it's more familiar for the consumers. And um, when it comes to industry, so of course the, easiest, uh, the easier way is to process it into powder. So there is no problem with visual associations and also palatability uh, or uh, um, extracted and produced into um, uh, food ingredients with specific functional properties. Um, so uh, why um, uh, the uh, interest with uh, edible insects, of course, the nutrient profile, as has been mentioned previously by Dr. Wasaporn, um, we have 
there has been many studies um, we also started to do we, we have been doing that as well uh, here but uh, again as i said before uh, the source of samples uh, are still very localized and uh, traditional so edible insects um, uh, of course there is a large variation in terms of the nutrient content uh, because of the diet the the uh, in what developmental stage they are uh, where they grow what species um, up to the uh, how you do the analysis for the nutrients, uh, nutrient analysis. But in general, we can say that uh, they have a higher energy content, higher protein, and even total fat contents uh, than other protein sources, other animal protein sources, and even, of course, better than the plant uh, uh, sources. In terms of protein, um, it has been compared to uh, cattle, to uh, birds, chicken and beef. So it, it, it's considered to have um, higher in terms of total protein, of course, when it comes to uh, dry matter. Um, but again, there is a large variation between species. So if we aim to, to use it uh, mostly for the protein content, we have to specifically find the, the suitable type uh, or species uh, to utilize. Um, but within the protein, within the, the, the picture of protein itself, uh, there is a, a slight concern in terms of digestibility because of the existence of the exoskeleton. So uh, when it comes to uh, 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 processing it into powder, uh, uh, the industry would tend to uh, remove the exoskeleton uh, to, to, to produce uh, uh, powder with a better digestibility of protein, but when it comes to traditional way of eating it, of course, it's a whole insect, uh, con including the exoskeleton. Uh, when it comes to quality, uh, it has a good amino acid profile. All the essential amino acids needed for growth are there. So it can be a good uh, um, um, ingredients when you want to tackle uh, malnutrition uh, or uh, protein deficiency or amino acid deficiency in some uh, um, communities. Um, this is only to provide you with uh, some pictures of uh, the variability of uh, amino acid score, uh, the digestibility, and some of the limited amin limiting amino acids contained in different types or different species of insects. Um, next, we have fat. Of course, it contains high fat, but fortunately, the high fat has more uh, is more on the unsaturated type uh, rather than the saturated type. So it has been considered to have less risk in terms of uh, uh, coronary coronary diseases. And again, if you talk about malnourished population or malnourished communities, um, the 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 main intervention strategy is usually to provide high energy high protein uh, supplement food so when you talk about high energy the easiest way to provide the energy is fat but if we provide it from insect it means that we provide fat but at the same time the fat is the good type of fat um, and then it has um, i will touch more on the chitin uh, one uh, the, the 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 primary component of the exoskeleton because it is um, less digestible, even uh, difficult to be digested. Uh, most of the studies uh, reported like that, but uh, because it it is difficult to digest, so somehow it's um, considered as a fiber. Uh, so it has uh, potential effects on gut health. Um, Again, um, this is uh, uh, another homework for um, nutrition and also food scientists to think about in the future. Like uh, on one side, the exoskeleton uh, affect the digestibility of the protein, but on the other side, the chitin, the primary component of the exoskeleton, has a potential uh, uh, to act like fiber in our uh, uh, digest digestion system. Um, it has been considered as uh, a good source of iron and zinc for insects. Again, um, because of the good content of iron and zinc, 
it is one of the uh, consideration when uh, you talk about nutrition intervention strategy, food-based nutrition intervention strategy to tackle uh, micronutrient deficiencies because iron and zinc, um, especially if you talk about uh, anemia and stunting ch in children in uh, uh, developing countries, um, then the, the, the basic need will be energy, protein, and micronutrient, uh, especially uh, zinc and iron. And then it has um, different types of vitamins. Again, uh, due to the variability of species, you might have different uh, composition of vitamins coming from different types of uh, insects. But in general, you can get the B groups, uh, you can get the um, fat soluble, um, vitamins, you can even have the pro-vitamins that at the same time can act as antioxidants. <clears throat> and then we have uh, bioactive compounds in insects, some um, 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 flavonoids group coming from phenol, coming from carotenoids, even the peptides because it is high in protein. So uh, the peptides can also act as antioxidant and um, uh, it can also provide um, other bioactivity uh, functions. Now, um, what about using it um, as an alternative source of nutrients? Um, the potentials is unqu unquestionable. Uh, it is considered to have adequate and even comparable in terms of nutrient profile. Um, digestibility can also be improved as long as the processing is correct. Um, in, uh, for, in terms of nutri nutritional uh, value, um, it has been considered good. Uh, it has been uh, in, included in consideration when uh, scientists developing food for special dietary purposes, for example, for as complementary food for infants and children with malnutrition because of the uh, protein quality, because of the uh, fat content and the type of fat it contains, because of the uh, zinc and mineral, zinc and iron and other minerals that it contains. And even there is a future scenario that uh, the, it is possible to use it um, in ready-to-use therapeutic food. So ready-to-use therapeutic food is specialized for severe uh, malnourished children. Um, um, it has very strict um, uh, regulations coming from the WHO and the FAO in terms of what it has to contain and so far we normally use uh, um, um, industrialized um, um, what do you call it fortificants in order to produce uh, these products so there is a possibility of using uh, uh, these local ingredients uh, to produce uh, this food for uh, special dietary purposes especially for malnourished children so the concerns in terms of processing, uh, it is susceptible to uh, rancidity. There is a possibility of allergic reaction. Um, of course, food safety um, uh, is always a concern. So farming and processing has to be uh, have to be controlled. Uh, bioavailability is also a concern, um, and anti nutrients that uh, contain uh, in um, especially the exoskeleton of, of uh, insects as well. Now I would like to move a little bit um, faster because I see the time. Now, this is another aspect that you might not see in other areas. Uh, I would say maybe another reason why it is not as advanced as how it is in Thailand, even though we are very close in terms of distance, the halal concern because of the largest population of Indonesia is Muslim. Um, so far, when it comes to live insects, when it comes to whole insects, um, the one that has been clearly stated, clearly stated as halal is grasshoppers, um, but others are still under study, so it's still studied because because the hal the concept of halal it has to cover safety, cleanliness, and uh, benefits. So when you talk about benefits, we have covered it in nutritional profile. But when you talk about safety and cleanliness, so this is why um, if it it if we want to uh, utilize it as a food source, then you have to we have to regulate it properly and clearly in terms of farming and 
processing to ensure that um, it is clean, it is safe, and not only that it is it has benefits. So you can see here uh, one of the on the right hand side one of the uh, food ingredients extracted from um, insects uh, that is used as a colorant in food industry. Uh, it 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 has been um, declared as halal by the uh, authority, by the national authority. Um, for those of you who are not familiar yet, like every every types of products or every type of ingredients has to be thoroughly analyzed before they can be uh, classified as halal. And if if one even a single ingredient that is even a single ingredient that is not halal, then you cannot expect the food product to be classified as halal. So it has to come from every single ingredient and it has to come even back to the factory, how they produce it, and even back to the farming. So it's a it's a, a thorough checking from farm to, to fork in order to get the halal um, consideration. Because um, one of the things that... Um, um, some people will say that it's questionable. It's because of the disgust, uh, not only safety, cleanliness, and uh, benefits, but also the the negative attitude towards towards uh, insects. So it's still um, homework to show that or to prove that um, it can fulfill all the uh, uh, checklists uh, in order to get the the halal status. So in conclusion, there is a benefit, and of course, there are many concerns related to edible insects. Um, it is possible to be used um, as long as we consider the hygiene, food safety, and halalness. So farming and processing would be much better if they are standardized and regulated. So thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very, very much, Dr. Sasutian. Uh, uh, and uh, I have eaten the honeybees uh, in Java. Okay. Yes. It's, it's very yummy, very delicious, and very mm -hmm. natural, I think. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Honeybees. Um, well, the, the more common is the, of course, the honey and propolis at the moment. Uh -huh. But yes, some some communities will also consume the, the bees yeah, themselves. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. Thank you very much. And uh, thank You're you very welcome. much for a new uh, viewpoint of this uh uh, hello. Uh, and yeah, as you said, uh, maybe that is very unique uh, viewpoint from uh, the six talks of, of today. So thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, uh, now we have some time lost, but I think uh, it's, uh, it's no problem under control. <laughs> so uh, now we have uh, five minutes for a coffee break. And uh, there, uh, there's a lot of questions and discussions in the chat. So uh, if you have any uh, questions or any comments or any answers, uh, please just type in and uh, we have very active uh, discussions here. Okay, see you. Uh, so maybe seven minutes is okay. So uh, let's start from uh, uh, the Bangkok Jakarta time, uh, maybe from five past 11, I think. And for Japanese time, five, uh, five past one uh, PM. Okay, see you later.
Okay, it's uh, 5 past 1 p.m. in Japan and uh, 5 past 11 uh, in Bangkok and Jakarta. Uh, let's start uh, the uh, second session of our uh, symposium. So there are three uh, talks in the second session. And uh, the first presentation will be given by uh, Dr. Satoshi Kamitani uh, at Kyushu University. Uh, Dr. Kamitani, uh, could you please... Uh, Share your screen.
no problem. And you can uh, turn on our microphone. Can you? Yeah, okay. no problem. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Today, my topic is production of insects as food using unutilized resources in Japan. My major is taxonomists of leaf hoppers, not so entomophagy. I just started to study entomophagy from the last year. Mainly, I talk about the field cricket, gorillas, bimaculotas, and Inokeros on beetle, uh, Oryctes, Inokeros, and Triple uh, Kishras, Dichotomas. Uh, as same as uh, Thailand and Indonesia, we eat insects traditionally. The most famous entomophagy in Japan is small locust, uh, grasshopper, on rice. Like this. And the larvae of aquatic uh, snake dragonflies. But uh, recently, uh, snake dragonflies are decreasing, not abundant. Then, now, aquatic Trichopteran larvae are used alternatively. These are eaten mainly in the mountainous area of central Japan. Why is not the entomophagy popular in Japan? Uh, in the most area of Japan, we can easily obtain fishes as protein. It is no need to eat insects. In Korea, pepper of silkworm, obix mori, is also one of traditional entomophagy. But in Japan, it is not so popular. In contrast, in 2020, the major uh, general store uh, named Ryohin Keika Cooperated started to sell cricket cracker and a reasonable price, about two or three uh, dollars. This was a breakthrough event in, in Japan. After this, commercial cricket cracker was sold by several companies. Many Japanese people focus on fuzzy without disgust after this. The cricket cracker is using a field cricket, Grillas by Maculatus powder, mainly by the company, this uh, Grillas Incorpor uh, Incorporation. This company was established as a venture company of Tokushima University at uh, 2019, just three years ago. In Tokushima University, they have been studying uh, behavior ecology and learning of crickets for a long time. Therefore, they have good skill for rearing or farming. Although now they are producing 10 ton per year, they will produce 60 ton in the next year, 2023. This is the largest uh, company in Japan. To save the uh, production costs, crickets are reared in close elementary school. Because the population of Japan is decreasing after 2008, the close elementary school are increasing year after year. Then we can use them by cheap cost. We want to use uh, such a uh, close elementary school in the future. However, the uh, balance sheet of this company of the last year is a deficit of 3.500 million Japanese yen. This is uh, about 2 million US dollars, 37 billion rupiah, 87 million bahts. So large. They say that it will uh, change into surplus uh, in the near future. There are some other cricket pharma companies in Japan. Uh, this is uh, Bugwell is one of them. Bugwell Cooperative was established at 2021, just last year. 
around Kyushu University, this is one of major companies. They educate cricket farmers how to rear and purchase crickets uh, reared by the uh, such farmers. Now they are producing uh, 12 ton per year with about 100 small farmers. They are planning to produce uh, 360 ton per year in the 2025 with uh, 1,000 farmers, the planning. Just Bugwell including is rearing about 200,000 cricket in two small rooms of a private house, like these photos. It's like a domestic handicraft industry. <laughs> so you know, in USA and Southeast Asia, crickets are usually reared in such open cages. This left photo is Anton Farms, the largest cricket farmer in USA, rearing a billion crickets. In contrast, in Japan, we are usually reared in closed cage, like this photo, to rear more and more crickets in small sp space. Three to four containers are stacked in the small areas. In Bugwell, a farmer produces 10 kilograms per month. The selling price of 10 kilograms is about a thousand US dollars by 200,000 crickets. This income is not enough against the cost. Therefore, higher productivity is necessary. To improve the productivity, we seek the optimal diet for crickets. This shows a uh, Morris Ramos et al. 2020 of USDA is summarized as follows. Intake of vitamin C, sterol, manganese, and vitamin B1 and B5 has the most significant impact on live biomass production. The greatest self-selected consumption were rice bran, corn, buckwheat, and dry cabbage. In Japan, popular cricket diet is feed for rabbits or cats in laboratory rearing. They are not so cheap. Rice and feed brands are uh, nutrient rich, but most of them have not been used for human food in Japan. Therefore, most farmers want to use this and utilize resources for cricket diet. In my laboratory, I'm performing multi-choice experiment, served nine kinds of diets for 50 first insta nymphs. The diets are rice bran, feed bran, soybean powder, fish meal powder, cat food, mixed feed of one to five, mixed feed with olive oil, mixed feed with uh, canola and soy oils, and sucrose. The result of this multi-choice experiment is crickets grab rice bran by the highest self-selected consumption. However, the next day, the preference to rice bran was distinctly reduced. This shows a high preference to rice bran is unstable. Now we are observing this changing of the preference of the crickets. The next topic is the, uh, the major unutilized resource, resources with social problem is unmanaged bamboo forest. In Japan, production of bamboo shoot is decreasing after 1990s by cheap imported bamboo shoot. This photo is campus of our Kyushu University. All the white trees 
a dead bamboos. To remove dead bamboos, we need much cost. Therefore, we leave them. <laughs> By managing bamboos, some people produce pulp or charcoal. However, the intake by these products is not enough. Now, a managed bamboo uh, expanding into natural forests, and the biodiversity of the natural forest is uh, disturbed. After cutting bamboos, we produce small chips and compost. We are now studying the mass layering of rhinoceros horn beetle with bamboos. One is a Tripochichiras dichotomas. This is native large beetle in Japan. The weight of larvae uh, sexually dimorphism and over 40 grams in male. But they are uniborting. In contrast, Oryctes dinocheros is in this uh, middle beetle. The weight of larvae is about 15 grams in both sexes. They are multivolting in the warmer condition, like a Okina prefecture, Oryctes is beneficiary. To use Dinocheros home beetle as entrophagy, we manage bamboo forests by composting. And we also use cow dung, chicken droppings, waste of crickets or silkworms for composting. In addition to entomophagy, we will get good compost for crops or a carbon credit by plantation of morass trees. The bamboo compost is naturally as poor for Oryctes, basically. The body weight of Oryctes larvae is in inverse of proportion to percentage of bamboo compost. Now we are seeking the optimal mixture of bamboo compost with other materials. The taste of the beetle powder is so usually it's very delicious. In contrast, larvae and adults are not delicious, not for humans. When we make cookies, it tastes like a cheese. The taste of form pupa or is also delicious. In South Asia, usually so uh, you use you eat beetles in the larvae or adults. Pipa is not so common. When we make curry, it right taste and good for every cooking. Maybe so this uh, next generation's entofazi in Japan. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Kamitani Sensei. The uh, rhinoceros curries is looks so delicious. <laughs> I want to try <laughs> yes. Maybe we can find some some pioneer restaurant in, in yes. Fukuoka to let them try. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, there there are some uh, there are a lot of questions and discussions. So uh, Kamitani Sensei, if you have time, please follow the chat and uh, yes, answer some questions if possible. Okay, so thank you, Kamitan Sensei. Uh, and the next presentation will be uh, given by uh, Dr. Kai, Kai Sensei. Uh, are you okay? Yes, you can turn on your speaker. Uh, yeah, I'm good, I'm okay. good, Kun Sensei. All right, thank you. Please go. All right. Um, thank you very much. And uh, my name is Saroj Kiamani. So uh, you can call me Saroj or you can call me Kai because uh, this name uh, was created by my, my Japanese professor and it's identical to my, my father's nickname. And it's also very easy for Japanese people and friends to call me that. So it's up to you. So. Um, it's my honor to give a talk about the update overview of the insect 
as food and feed in Thailand and Southeast Asia. So what I'm going to talk today, so I'll give you like uh, which insect species are eaten, some information have been talked you know, a lot by, by the previous uh, speaker. So I will not mention that much. Um, insect species as food and feed, and also the Thailand and Southeast Asia insect market. So you can see uh, what have been here in, in my country and also uh, in, in the Southeast Asia. And also the worldwide insect market give you the perspective and give you the pet business perspective as well. Uh, I'll give you the answer why we have to talk about the pet, pet business and the future research and, and the trend. And last but not least, uh, give you some of uh, our team product. So let's talk with uh, the insect. As I told you before that, uh, that the previous speaker had mentioned a lot that insect can be eaten. And you know, now uh, people in the world, it's uh, 2 billion people. So we need to find uh, the alternative good source of the protein and also the, the good nutrient. So insect is one of the good source. You can see on the le uh, the right, I'm sorry, the right uh, graphic that I uh, I searched from the, the uh, FAO. So you can see that this is the world map. Um, our continent, Asian continent, so we have uh, around 150 to 200 uh, species that can be eaten and not only in Asian country but also in Africa and, and uh, the America continent as well. And on the left graph you see the growing buds around the edible insect it increase every year. So to emphasize and also to encourage that we are in the right path. And which insect are we eating? Well according to the FAO, so the most commonly uh, consume insect, which at first when I search the information, I, I'd be surprised because I know uh, mainly cricket and also silkworm, but 31% uh, is coleoptera, so it's beetle, and 80% is a caterpillar, and you can see uh, another, you know, 40% it wasps and ants, 13% is lobus and cricket, so it's 13%. And to make sure that uh, everyone that are in the insect industry, we are in the right way. We are uh, very friendly to earth. Why? Because it produces greenhouse gas production comparing to another species. You can see the graph on the left side. The FCR also with high effic uh, efficiency comparing to uh, beef cattle and the land use as well. So let's see the product. In, in Thailand and Southeast Asia, uh, normally uh, we normally found the uh, you know the fry insects in the market in Thailand. That's a lot, and you know people really love it. In terms of the product, uh, you know we we see some you know some some company some startup have done like uh, with uh, add some flavor. To, to the silkworm, as you can see here, and also the cricket. And also let's see another country, that's all at the bar. So uh, the insect protein mixed with fruit, uh, flavor with fruit. So that's the old wheel in, in Thailand and Southeast Asia. There's some restaurant in Thailand that I work with, and they have many interesting menu. For example, the left side is Okonomiyaki with the silkworm. Okay, and the uh, the wagyu, the Australian wagyu. Okay, they also put some some powder of the insect inside, mixed with rice, as well. And on the right side, this is a Mexican nacho. It mix uh, insect, and also uh, the uh, the dessert. Let's see worldwide. You can see that in the worldwide stage, they have more various kind of the product comparing to uh, Thailand and Southeast Asia. They have a bit of beers, uh, they have cricket pasta, whey protein made from the insect protein. I think that's the way we have to go, 
go for that. And, and also the cricket bitters, the whey protein like the bar, and also mating, I think you guys have, have known a lot. So this is in the, the worldwide stage that we have to, to climb up if, if we want to, to increase our product, um, you know, our product quality and also for the, the sustainability for our world. Let's talk about pet and the contents of I, uh, I have told you guys why we have to mention about pet business. It because the population aging. So now we are in the aging population era. So the aging people, we live longer. Okay, uh, we live longer, we should have friends. So pets is one of the friends. Um, let's say in my country, so the dual income and non-kids, so D-I-N-K, DINK, which means that they have the dual income, they don't have kids, they want, they need to have uh, somebody to repress the kids. So pets is the very good example. Next reason, it's pet humanization. They make pets like human. They treat, they aim for the best thing for pets and improve the, the pet health care. So that's also uh, improved in the, the pet business market all around the world, not only in my country. And the friendly pet community, you can see that they bring uh, dogs, cats, or other animals and play together at a cafe. You can see the lower graph. So dogs and cats get more than 50% of the pets in each country. You can, you can see in, in any country you want, like China, Hong Kong. So it's in, in same ratio. And also the top 10 pet food company in Asia. So you can see that mainly from uh, Japan, some from Thailand, Australia, some from South Korea. So the insect proteins can be in the pets, you know, industry as well. I think now many company, they have done and uh, trying to launch the product. Uh, I think start from, from next year. I'll give you one example. One example, one company in Thailand, so-called Excel Food. Um, this is a good example because they see opportunity of the exotic pets in Thailand. Now it's increased a lot. So they know the exotic pets consume insects like meerkat, uh, tarantula spider, and like chameleon, and also the, the breed uh, dragon, some kind of a lizard. So they consume insects. So they, um, you know, they, they make like, for example, black soil, black solar fly larvae and they give to, you know, the, the exotic pets. Not only human, not only pet, but also you can see another potential if you want to put the uh, insect as a feed for the animal. For example, aquaculture, okay? Uh, I think there are some research they, they also replace uh, the nutrient, like uh, use the insect protein for shrimp, for crab. And I think the result, even my team, we, we have done some pilot, uh, you know, study. And we found that, um, you know, the mortality rate is it's decreased significantly comparing to another commercial, uh, commercial products. But the price, it's, it's a bit higher than another commercial product. That's why we need to uh, balance the, the budget if, you, if we want to shift to, to the uh, insects protein. Poultry and pig as well, but you need to, to think about the budget. About the future research, um, I propose some, okay? So we should see the, the insect nutrient requirement inside each species the amino acid digestibility in each insect that we need to find. And also the, uh, you know, the active compounds inside like antioxidant. I think Dr. Wasserpon and also many, you know, many scientists in, in, in this community, they have done a lot. 
for example b okay b they have royal jelly propolis b pollen even i also i have consumed the the uh, royal jelly from from australia as well but i also want to see a better product inside my country okay so b products they have bioactive compound which has like antimicrobial activity immuno you know modulatory activity antioxidant activity and not only b we can also find from from another uh another insect that uh you know we're looking forward to see a very good result from from another species that's going to be great for for the world last but not least let's see my work so this is the species that i work i think many people do the face like it why are you working this species because cricket black soil fly silkworm you know you know thousands of scientists have done a lot but this one as i mentioned so we give to the arowana paima and the you know the farm owner asked me hey let's see the bioactive compound inside this bt because you know just only 30 days it's twice bigger than cricket and it's not stinky let's see what's inside so but this one we're not long for for uh the commercial we just do inside our laboratory and we just ask uh you know the participants so mainly they are swimmers they are athletes and they're willing to test this kind of products uh before we made this product so it's it's truly clean because we, we check in the laboratory that it's free from the bacteria the free from uh the fungi and we make many kind of products so it can be possible but the fda in thailand is still not allow us because we need to find like 30 years at least the history of consuming of this species so you know the answer so i try another thing from dr Vasapon's um suggestion that we should find a bioactive compound inside and i think interesting that they have the uh the antioxidant activity so we, we test by the abts dpps and also frap methods and we found that it's higher than the citrus food so we are working on this uh project and you know uh insect industry um if you can like separate like crude protein oil and all the other thing and you can also shake that's going to be great you know especially oil uh, as far as I check, it has antibacterial activity in this, uh, you know, the uh, lobster roach protein. So I call I lobster. That's uh, the mayday from my boss. So he want to call like this. So it's I lobster. So it has the anti, you know, bacterial activity. So thank you very much for your attention. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Kai. Your, your Japanese is very brilliant. Have you ever no, been to Japan? So. <laughs> <laughs> a long time? I forgot a lot, so I, I need oh. to practice. So next year, if I can go to Fukuoka, so that's going to be great to, to catch up with, with uh, the Japanese scientists and also my, my Japanese language as well. Yes, hope, hope you can have a chance to visit Fukuoka ah. in, in the future. And maybe the second second symposium of this yeah. <laughs> All right, so uh, we get some time lost, but I think I will take maybe like ten minutes uh, to share my slide here. Um, okay, uh, but first uh, let me pass the cost to my secret secretary. Uh, me, oh, there's a lot of there's a lot of participants here. Uh, let me find. Uh, Ms. Kunisaki, I have passed the host to you. <laughs> so if there are new uh, participants, uh, please uh, allow them come in. Okay. I think it's okay. Yeah. So uh, I will start my slide here.
Oh, uh, yes. Can you see my slide? Okay. Uh, all right. Mm -hmm. Okay, I hope it's okay. So uh, I just share some uh, small information about uh, the northern China, actually my hometown. Uh, there is a long tradition of eating this insect, but now, uh, as you know, uh, there are some new trends, uh, obviously, to, to, to feed uh, to the new uh, customers and uh, uh, habits uh, of, of food. Uh, so why I use this, uh, this uh, grasshopper as a logo of this event. Uh, actually, when I was uh, uh, a child, uh, every weekend in the autumn, I went to my grandma's home. There was a large wheat field nearby, uh, which had been harvested. Uh, that means there's a lot of grasshoppers over there. And uh, I just uh, catch, caught the grasshoppers with my parents, uh, with my uncles, my, my father, uh, and changed them to food. <laughs> This is a very typical, uh, how to say, uh, insect food in, in northern China. And uh, for self-introduction, I was from uh, Shandong province in, in, in China and came to Japan 17 years ago uh, for the postgraduate study. I'm now associate professor at uh, this Institute for Asian and Oceania Studies of Kyushu University. And my background is actually uh, psychology. So uh, maybe most of you think that there's uh, less relationships between psychology and uh, eating insects. But uh, I can tell you uh, there is there is big relationship because uh, to decide uh, to eat them or not is, is people's, how to say, mind and people's psychology and be people's behavior. So uh, actually there is a lot of promotions now, uh, not only in Japan, uh, but worldwide. Uh, a lot of companies just produce a lot of new productions uh, which uses insect, uh, but when you hear this kind of news, maybe you just say, "Wow, it, it, it's, it's new, it's good, it's it's very in, very environmental, very friendly to uh, eco friendly, very SDGs." But I don't eat <laughs> because I don't want to. That is people's psychology. Uh, actually, uh, I spent uh, 22 years in China, and after that, I came to Japan. So uh, almost half of my my lifetime was spend in Japan. But uh, this 22 years in China, I, I was uh, I lived in uh, this Shandong province, uh, both uh, Zebo uh, and actually the um, correct pronunciation is Zibo. Uh, both Zibo and, and Qingdao are uh, cities in Shandong province. So let's say the location of Shandong province. Uh, this red uh, line uh, province is Shandong. And there's a lot of major cities. Uh, Zibo and Qingdao are two major cities here. And you can find uh, some other Chinese cities like Beijing and Shanghai and Hong Kong. And you know the location of Shandong province. Uh, actually, this is very uh, big province in China because uh, first, uh, this is the most important root of Chinese culture and even Eastern Asian culture. Uh, you know this illust illustration, who, who is this? Do you know that? Uh, this is uh, Confucius, uh, Koshi in Japanese or Kongzi in Chinese. Uh, you know, uh, he maybe is the base of, of say, the, the, the thinking and the culture of uh, the whole Eastern Asia. And uh, his hometown is in Shandong province. And now uh, Shandong province has 7% uh, of the population and the GDPs of China. And actually, it's the biggest agriculture province of China. So maybe uh, the friends from uh, Kassasat University know this province uh, because it's very famous and there is agriculture university in Shandong province. And uh, later I will talk about Southern and Northern China. Uh, actually in Northern China, the most developed province is this Shandong province. Uh, one evidence of this agri uh, agriculture province is that uh, it, export a lot of, of uh, agriculture products to Japan and overwide. And maybe you go to the supermarket in Japan, you can find these peanuts and the garlic uh, are almost uh, imported from Shandong province. 
But where is Northern China? Uh, what's this concept? Uh, actually, there is a lot different, uh, how to say, uh, method of distinguish uh, from, from south to north by river, by climate, by culture. And uh, one interesting thing is by crops. Uh, this is a very famous paper. I think maybe uh, some of you have uh, read this. Uh, it's a how to say psychology or social science, but uh, was published by Science. Uh, large scale psychological difference within China experience explained by rice versus wheat agriculture. Actually, uh, one how to say different between this south and rice, uh, south and what? Sorry, south and north is the crops. Uh, and you can see this is a map of uh, rice wheat border of country level. You can see uh, less 50% rice and uh, more than 50% rice. And you can see uh, the Southern China, uh, they mainly uh, eat rice and Northern China uh, mainly eat uh, wheat. So that make a different, made different uh, culture, uh, wheat culture and rice culture. For rice culture, because water is very important resource, so uh, they have to uh, have more collaborations in the villagers to talk about how to use the water and how to collaborate with each other. And finally, uh, they get more interdependent and more groupist, uh, groupi groupistic. Uh, but for Northern people, because uh, they don't need so many corp uh, corporations with the villagers. So uh, in the long history, they're getting more uh, independent and uh, individualistic. So actually, this is a type of meal in northern in my home, my home and my wife's home. My wife's home is from the southern part of Jiangsu province, and uh, I'm from Shandong province. This is very typical uh, meal, and you can see, uh, in the southern uh, province, uh, they eat rice, but in our home, where is the stable food? There's no rice. There's something like like okayu, like some soup, rice soup here, but there's no stable food. And the answer is that there's there's like this. <laughs> maybe most of you know this is Chinese steamed buns, and it is maybe set uh, in not only in in China but also in in Japan, in Indonesia, and in Thailand. And actually, for uh, the northern people, uh, a typical meal was conceived by these two. So they just eat uh, this kind of dishes and with this mantle. And sometimes we eat this. <laughs> Uh, and you know this is sick womb uh, pupae, and uh, this is very typical food uh, in, in northern China. And now uh, let me change topic to insect food in North China. And actually, uh, there's a lot of different methods to cook this, uh, to put some vegetables inside, and there are some very uh, good package for this. Uh, it calls local specialty. Uh, why this kind of products? became the local specialty of, of Shandong province because uh, there's history of this civil city. Uh, actually, this is the Eastern end of the Silk Road. Uh, so historically uh, here, it was a major center of silk supply. So as byproducts, uh, people think how to, how to say, use these byproducts from silk production. Uh, that is a good idea that to eat them. So uh, in maybe this, this history, uh, people start to eat uh, this pupae and uh, start a new food culture. So this is just one uh, repre represent representative food. And another one is uh, scorpions. Uh, maybe I, I think I, I found some scorpions in Bangkok in the night market, uh, but it's, it's bigger. Uh, in Shandong province, they eat maybe smaller one uh, as well, a part of dishes. And another uh, interesting phenomenon is that uh, maybe in early summer, every early summer, if you go to the park, you can find this kind of guys like ghosts, but they are not ghosts, they are people. Uh, what they are looking for? Uh, they're looking for this uh, cicada, cicada, the nymphs of cicada. And uh, you can see uh, that this is not my child, and this is not me, but the children in China, as Northern China, this is a very good game for them. And after they catch this, uh, they will change them to food. And this is very delicious and high protein food. And of course, uh, the food I have introduced, the grasshopper. 
And uh, of course, you can uh, catch this uh, from field. And of course, uh, there are some spies in the market. Uh, if you go to the market, uh, even in winter, uh, you can find this kind of uh, materials of insects. Uh, it, it's interesting that uh, the insects are always sold with fish or seafood, I don't know. Uh, even in Thailand, uh, I, I go to some, some uh, local market, I can find there are some booths for fish and seafood. They also eat uh, sell insects. And this grasshopper and the uh, cicadas here. Uh, and of course, uh, there is a uh, silkworm pupae here. And if you go to in a better season like summer, uh, there will be more fresh ones uh, and even these uh, uh, living ones. This is living grasshopper. And this is a story about Zubo. And uh, when we go to Qingdao, and actually Qingdao is, uh, is a coastal city. It's a very beautiful coastal city. So a coastal city should not be a fan of eating insects because it can get protein from sea. But uh, when you go to the local market of the city, you can still find a insect food feast over there. And you can find more uh, various and more diverse food over there. Uh, this is just like the night market in Thai, I think. And for more insect food in Northern China, uh, actually we have this uh, like uh, barbecue. Uh, this is very similar to uh, Indonesian and the other uh, Bangkok and the other Southeastern countries. Uh, they have a lot of materials and uh, barbecue over there. And the uh, one material is this uh, uh, moss. Uh, we eat most not only by uh, pupae, but also by uh, adults. It's very, how to say, uh, delicious. And uh, of course, caterpillar. And another uh, representative uh, food is uh, this, uh, I'm not sure if, if this name is, is good, uh, because we have professionals here, Kamitani Sensei, and uh, I, I hope this is correct. And uh, but but in Chinese we have a more lovely name for this uh, bean bean worms, <laughs> and it's very huge. But uh, after fried, it should be very delicious. And how about the southern China? They don't eat insects, but uh, no, uh, maybe they eat more. So uh, but uh, today we have uh, no time, so uh, I just use ten minutes uh, to share my my information. Uh, for more information, uh, please contact me. Uh, I, I, I'm always uh, calling for these uh, collaborations about this food insect and entomophagy. Uh, please contact me. And I use SNS. Uh, if, if possible, please add, add me as friends. Okay, so I just use maybe 12 minutes to finish my uh, talk. And now uh, we are on the uh, part of general Q&A for discussion. Okay, actually this session, the most important uh, focus or aim is, uh, is networking. So uh, actually we have more than 30 uh, participants here. Uh, so let's, if possible, uh, let's turn on our speaker and cameras and let's know with each other. Uh, language should not be a problem, I think, uh, because we, we, we have uh, Dr. Ta Kai here who can speak Japanese and English, and uh, I can also speak Japanese. So uh, we will, uh, uh, how to say, provide uh, necessary maybe integration uh, or, or translation. And uh, okay, I will end my uh, slide sharing. And uh, okay, so uh, let's turn on our uh, cameras and uh, speakers. And is there anybody who want to say something? Uh, any questions or any comments? Okay, please, Takeda, uh, Dr. Takeda. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, no problem. Yeah, thank you very much for the, all of the speakers. They were very nice talk. I have just started the like, edible insect project in the Kyoto Prefecture University. And I want you to ask about the, the food safety or security to sell on the market. And when you sell the product, maybe you have to check the nutrients and also the allergy mm -hmm. for the, the people. And I think the insects are more similar to the like a shrimp 
or crabs. For the people who have the allergy for those crabs or shrimps, they may be reacting to the insect as well. So do, do you know any information about the allergy check to uh, sell the, on the market? Or is there any legal mm -hmm. uh, matter to sell in the, like in, in the Indonesia or the Thailand or in Japan if you, or China, if, if you have any information for the food security? I, I want to know about that. Okay, actually, maybe, uh, yeah, please, Dr. Champu. Um, yeah, I can speak um, for Thailand. We have the, well, it, and, um, we have only two insect species allowed to sell in Thailand in like packaged food, um, which is the one pupae, <coughs> sorry, and, and crickets. So there is a list of things that have to be checked, uh, particularly the, um, the um, microbial uh, contamination. Okay. Uh, particularly for these two insects, so so yeah, mm -hmm. so that's that's on the hand of the hands of um, Thai FDA, and for um, for allergies um, labeling, uh, they label like contains um, yeah contain insects of course, mm -hmm. and and it can yeah like they like have to be careful with the uh, the people who are allergic with uh, crustaceans have to be careful in consumption this right. product yeah something like that but they um, don't um, they don't ask for uh, the check of the content of of allergic uh, of allergens in there um, yeah so they, they just make a yeah a warning or yeah a label for that so uh, that's it's true that is that they have cross reaction of the, a protein called topromycosin found mm. in crustaceans and insects. So uh, yeah, there's no, there's, it, it also depends, like Dr. Sureda mentioned, it depends on how we process them. Mm -hmm. It can, it, yeah, it can differ um, allergens content in, yeah, in products. So yeah, it's not, it's not the amount that we have to claim, just, just that you have to be careful okay. when eating. But in the, like a local market, Maybe in, in Thailand, I, I found that many sagawars they sell or other insects, but there is no kind of the roof to sell. No, that, we in don't have that. Like, like, like food stalls in, in okay. Thailand, we don't have that. Only packaged food. Okay, on the market to sell. On the market is, is their okay. own risk. Right, okay, okay. Right, thank you. Uh, you're welcome. Uh, yeah, maybe just for uh, a, a in addition, uh, uh, actually, there are some. There's a lot of uh, insect farms in China uh, to produce this kind of products, uh, not only for the local market but also for uh, exportion, like uh, to Japan. Uh, if you go to uh, actually last week, I went to uh, Nagano Prefecture, and you know uh, the grasshopper is a uh, very traditional food in Nagano Prefecture, and if you but if you see the uh, how to say uh, materials uh, of the the products, and you can find uh, it was imported from China. So mm. uh, actually, this is like uh, we call it maybe insect farm or insect factory uh, uh, to produce this kind of uh, how to say uh, food uh, as materials. Yeah. So uh, in that case, uh, in China, I think they just clear the same safety level with other how to say food products. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think there is special checklist for only for cricket or only for uh, grasshoppers. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But uh allergy is, is, is a very very important and interesting question because uh, in Japan it's it's very healthy, uh serious about this uh uh display of uh allergy. But in yeah, China, yeah, sensitive to the allergy, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm. But in China there's no, not now. I think okay. maybe, maybe in future, maybe in future. Yeah. Uh, so it yeah. depends on the country. There are many different rules. Yeah, yeah. Depends on countries. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, are you doing research uh, about this eating insect? Yeah, I, I'm starting the like a yellow mealworm because oh. it grow with a rice bran. So I. I've tried to combine with a natural agriculture. 
mm -hmm. which means that there is no use for the artificial chemicals like a chemical fertilizer or herbicide, a pesticide. Mm -hmm. And then we use the natural, uh, like a like a rice bran, to reuse to grow the yeah. insects. And then we use uh, the insect, uh, like a uh, zansa insect insects. Uh, ah, okay, okay, okay. And then and we use to the agriculture. It's recycling. Yeah. Yeah, like a, okay. the environmental cycling, the food processor system. So in that case, a yellow mealworm is the best for me now. Mm -hmm. But I want to try with the other insects that you showed today, uh, like a BSF or something. Okay. Actually, uh, I, I want to join you next year in Kishu okay. University. Yeah. Okay. yeah. <laughs> Actually, after, after. Well, thank you very time. much. Thank you very much. Uh, after this event, I will send my mails to uh, all, all of the participants uh, to announce uh, the second uh, one. And uh, considering that uh, Dr. Takeda uh, talked about this uh, cycling, I think there's a lot of friends here. Uh, they are doing business and maybe researchers about this recycling between food and waste. Uh, is there any other comments or, or questions? Kun Sensei, can I okay. ask? Yeah, of course. Two, that's two short questions. Um, first, awesome presentation. So I would like to ask you about what do you think about um, use insect as, as the cosmetic? I think that there's a lot of advertisement from China. And another thing is about a, a cockroach milk. Mm -hmm. What at, As the expert and, and also like the other expert in here too. What what do you think about these two products and and the possibility to, uh, to make it happen? Thank you. Uh, I I think uh at least the second the second product is very how to say difficult psychologically. <laughs> uh, it's pro produced from uh uh cockroach right, cockroach milk right? Yes. Yes. Uh, how do you think? I think, uh, uh, you know, for, yeah, for me, on the internet, they say that that it's high possibility, high, you know, nutrient, blah, 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 something like that. So I, I think the best thing is to ask from, from the expert here, not only just, just read from the news on the internet. Yes. I, I think we need to have kind of strong constraints to make us drink bad products, that kind of product. I'm not saying that it's not good, but I think we need some kind of, like consumers need some kind of big pressure to go, to step forward, to cross their kind of disgusting feeling or the bad feelings about that kind of product to, 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 to eat. Because now, like Dr. Kun mentioned that mm. people say, okay, if they have a choice, I'm not gonna eat. Same here in Thailand. My colleagues, they say, if I have a choice, I'm not gonna eat insects. So we have to reach the, the, the level of, they do not have any choice or limited choices, things like that. Yes, I, I was answer the same, if they have a choice, not yeah. yet for me. Uh, I think maybe to be a, a sanitary insect or not is very important. Uh, for example, actually I, I'm not, I think, Mm, for me, uh, it's not so acceptable to eat something like uh, flies, uh, even the black soldier flies, because from the name, it, it's, it's a kind of fly, right? And a fly is a, a sanitary insect. And of course, uh, uh, cockroach is, uh, is maybe, maybe the worst one. <laughs> so uh, for this kind of insects, uh, people's, how to say, mindset is... Uh, uh, like like this kind of insects are, are not clean, unclean, or very dirty, or related to, I don't know, virus. Uh, in that case, it's, I think it's, it's more difficult to accept them as food, uh, even like, like uh, milk. <laughs> but I heard that news, it's, it's, it's quite shocking. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Kun. But I, I will give just, just a short comment um, that, you know, long time ago, American people, they, they had to eat cricket. Uh -huh. They used to taste like some kind of protein and say, wow, this is so delicious. What are they made from? 
and then the you know the announcer say it's made from cricket, and then their face turn pale. Uh huh. But that's a long time ago. But now okay. the, Amer- the American people they can they can did uh accept the insect product more. Uh huh. So that's that's the reality in America, and I think we can learn something from them yeah. how they can change that that people think about it, the insect as well. And you know, last week that there was. The exhibition about about you know the future food or something in Japan. I I know from my friend, and that's a lot. Uh, there's a lot of insect product mm-hmm. in Japan, even in Kyushu University about the silkworm. That's awesome. That's truly yeah. awesome. Yeah, I would like to have this in my country more and more, and also Soviet in Asia more and more. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, maybe one goal uh, of Kyushu University is should uh, there are some um, silk work cookies, uh, which has been uh, introduced by Dr. Alaki. But uh, unfortunately, I, I think the materials of that cookie was not produced in this campus, I think. Uh, I, I, am, am I correct, uh, Dr. Alaki? No, uh, some uh, uh, contents are produced in Kyushu University. Okay, so. okay. That, that, that yeah. is good. Uh, uh-huh. Yes. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of universities in like Tokushima University, uh, Dr. Kamidani-sensei uh, has introduced. There are uh, several, how to say, this kind of trends to uh, to promote uh, insect food in universities. Uh, and uh, I found there's a lot of friends here uh, in Kyushu University who want to promote this. <laughs> yes. <laughs> now, so we are actually that in the productions is, Maybe next year we will produce a uh, beetle cookies. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, but so productive is not so less. <laughs> Maybe next year, the, after the next year, we will produce <laughs> beetle cookies. <laughs> wow, we are looking forward to that. And, and uh, Reno Zero Curry, I, <laughs> yeah. I like that. <laughs> okay, is there any questions from the floor? Uh, um, I, I I'm, I'm actually going through all the questions. Mm-hmm. I I think people are into. That's one question about the uh, the feed of insects mm-hmm. or feed for uh, BSF. So what we have to be careful, and so the regulations are not yet there. Is the feed of of insects. Um, there are some compounds that are harmless to to insects, to BSF or crickets, but it, it can be that they can be accumulated in the yeah in in the body of the insects, and then transfer. We, if if we eat, then we also consume those harmful substances. So um, the EU now um, considering very much the feed of BSF. Mm-hmm. Um, in Thailand, the regulations are not yet there. So you might see regulations regarding to the feed of BSF even launch it, I mean, be- being launched before any other countries. And then other countries will, I think, adopt the regulations of EU regarding this. So BSF eats all kinds of things, but we have to be careful with that before the compounds enter yeah. our to the chain. Okay. Yes, so uh, that's the case of BSF and crickets as well. There's some crickets that, yeah, we found compounds and some products in Thailand are rejected because of those compounds. Uh, f- four or five years ago, we got an issue about egg tray. Mm-hmm. We use eggs, eggs, egg tray to rear crickets and, uh, and, and it's made from, I mean, egg trays are made from uh, that are some compounds added into that the, the recycling process presents in the egg tray, and then come to the cricket and they found it. But now the problem is kind of, yeah, it's better now, it's solved. But this is an example. Thank you. Thank you for our response to these questions. And uh, uh, I want to uh, extend this uh, symposium for only five minutes from now. So uh, maybe we can have one or two simple questions. 
or comments uh, or self-introduction. Uh, this is time for networking, so uh, please. Okay. Please. Okay. Uh, yeah. Ah, no, long time no see saying, uh, saying, say, say. I say, okay. say. Then uh, just I introduce myself, then I, I'm in Lao. Then oh. I, we developing, growing Palm Weaver here is for a low rural area income and nutrition both way. Then, uh, and also uh, we started uh, growing tapaten uh, in the grasshoppers, which uh, oh, so big. Um, it is, uh, uh, yesterday I faced to the pro uh, problem, uh, the agricultural sector, uh, to stop growing uh, grasshoppers because they are afraid uh, the, the uh, bad effect for rice crops. Mm -hmm. Then uh, I'd like to see evaluate which is dangerous <laughs> uh, for palm weevil and uh, grasshoppers. I think palm weevil also dangerous in Japan because uh, it affects damage for uh, uh, sago uh, palm or uh, as a one, but a lot of people think it is the natural turnover. Then that's why I'd like to see uh, how to negotiate and evaluate to talk with Lao governor. There's, there's also a challenge we, we have in Thailand as well. Yes, yeah, I'd yeah. like to see Tha it's... Thailand <laughs> farmers. Can I introduce me? <laughs> can, no, can, can sorry. Us? Yes, can, can, can you introduce me about uh, farming or uh, keeping safety of farming of grasshopper? Yeah, it's because like uh, the um, saku worm that you saku mentioned. Saku and also we, grasshoppers. Yeah, in, 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 in the yeah in the south we have uh, we have some farms growing and neighboring area reported that they come to destroy the their plants. Even BSF, it has it has an impact on on a small and a small insects that makes. Uh, uh, red color, uh, na naturally, I don't know how to call that in, in, in English, but they have like competition of the food, of their, their food. Uh, so yeah, there's, it's, it's their pro and cons. So they have to, yeah, I don't know how, how, how to answer this. We are still have to, yeah, how, how sure is sure that we capture them all, that we don't yes. any chance leak them out. Mm. Yeah, the problem yes, of uh, crickets is, is doesn't exist because crickets are uh, mm. harmless. Yes, then I already, uh, uh, Japanese research already tried BSA, but rural area in Lao, no organic waste. Then, uh, and also some uh, another NGO tried cricket, but uh, it is so high cost to buy artificial field from Thailand because it needs truck transportation. Mm. Mm. Then that's why I try to use self-supplying feed to be insect, but mm -hmm. it affects to be agri agriculture. Then that's why I try to negotiate with mm -hmm. uh, agriculture sector in now. In, in Thailand, if for the um, you have in, in they say the regulations, uh, the authority in Thailand, there are two ways to get to get the documents out, like like a DAP or or regulations involved in those kind of thing. One is that is the um, is the rest from, from people that, hey, it's harmless, you have to control this, you have to control that, then the government will do something, the, the authority will do something to make kind of regulations happen. Yes, that's this from, from the negative side, but from, from the positive side yes. is that there are uh, companies of private sectors came together and they say that we would like to export to, the, to, to other countries or we being able to sell in Thailand. So we need to have regulations. So the regulations can come from both sides, negative and positive. Um, mm -hmm. So in your case, um, in Laos, I'm, I'm not so sure. But it, but more, like for crickets, we have we have uh, regulations that's come from positive side because we would like to export to other countries. And BSF, they are considering that people have reported um, impact, the negative impact on the environment. So. Regulations might come from a ne from the yeah the negative side. Yes, then just I I I am think the kind of our new ethical issues uh, we should not uh, separate 
the traditional uh, rural area people who uh, uh, always eating insect and uh, like us, uh, well educated and developed countries. And uh, that's, uh, we should make a new rule to combine with rural area to be uh, developed. Then, um, then I'm thinking about researchers, uh, uh, including me, uh, well educated. Then uh, we should uh, inclusion, in inclusive way to discuss each other who mm -hmm. uh, ordinary eating insect, I think. Then uh, I'd like to, what, what, how do we say, I think, then I apply to food ethics or any way, but I am um, so difficult to uh, con uh, connect each other. Uh, please uh, give me some, any idea. Thank you very much. Uh, and maybe uh, I will end this uh, symposium officially. And after that, uh, let's use some time to, uh, for Hopsi. Uh, if it's a real meeting, we need some time to change our business card, right? So uh, after I end this uh, symposium, uh, maybe now, uh, the people who want to stay, please stay. And we have uh, 10 minutes more for a free talk. Uh, and now uh, I will end this recording. But before that, let me give my big thanks to all the speakers and all the participants here. And uh, looking forward to seeing you next year, uh, maybe on site in Fukuoka. Uh, I will gambaru. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Uh, I will uh, end the recording here and uh,